Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with GTA 5. If you enjoy this video, please write Modest Pelican Gaming on your bare chest, strip off, and then get baptised as many times as humanly possible, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. Michael DeSanta, a former most wanted bank robber who faked his own death so that he could retire and live a peaceful life of luxury with his family in Los Santos. I'm a good man now who upholds a strict moral compass and looks out for thy neighbour. You see this woman smoking a cigarette? Well, I gently remind her that she should find a healthier hobby. And perhaps get a vape pen, big girl, so you can blow safe clouds just like the wee baby Jesus did. Before I go home to my loving family, I desperately need a haircut. Did you know it's apparently illegal to run over pedestrians in California? They call it vehicular manslaughter or something hilarious like that. Anyway, I get myself a new beard which looks thick and juicy, just don't overthink the practicality of what just happened. What do you mean I always give my video game avatars facial hair as a way of vicariously enjoying the aesthetic benefits of a beard because I can't grow any hair on my face in real life? I've got a pretty nice mansion, I must say, and now I'd like you to meet my family. My wife Amanda and daughter Tracy, who do be looking thick. Wait, how old is Tracy? Okay, she's 22 years old, so we're safe there. Now it's only weird because I'm her father. Also, I lied about the loving family part. We all hate each other, but I do have a best friend forever. Old mate Franklin, and we decide to go and sink a few beers together. It's at this moment that my disappointment of a son Jimmy calls and informs me that he's been kidnapped. It's always about him, he's really self-centered. See, this is the key problem with having kids. If you have a son, they're careless and will probably end up getting themselves killed. But if you have a daughter, they end up dancing with their pants off on TikTok while men in their 50s inappropriately comment about their physique. And kind of like I did in the kitchen two seconds ago, but it's okay when I do it because I'm rich. We've taken my wife Amanda's convertible and it becomes immediately apparent that the situation is far worse than we first thought. You see, that is my yacht being stolen and my son Jimmy is inside of it. Perhaps I could broker a deal where I swap Jimmy for the yacht. It would be clean because no money would need to change hands, but no, best not to be selling teens to Salvadorian gangsters. I managed to save him, but my car unfortunately dies and the boat is gone forever. I choose to immediately forgive the boy and I definitely won't bottle up my resentment so that it comes out later in unhealthy and violent ways. That'd just be poor parenting. I head home and it's time to have some post-marital lights off missionary position physical relations with my gorgeous wife. All of a sudden the penny drops and it becomes clear that she's been smashing her tennis coach. I confront them both and then he jumps out the window breaking it and also breaking my favourite terracotta rectangular flower pot. Wow. I decide to chase the man down and of course Franklin is conveniently here as well. I'm a bit of a mentor figure for him which is all sorts of ironic but at least he probably won't smash my wife too. We're in hot pursuit and then this van pulls out without giving way. First the sanctity of my marriage is destroyed by adultery, then my petunias, and now we're apparently not accounting for vehicles entering or approaching an intersection who have right of passage. It's a slippery slope, isn't it? We find the tennis coach and he's hiding out on the deck of his mansion. Naturally, we tie the cable from a winch to his deck and then use the truck to pull the entire front of his house off the cliff. Unfortunately, it turns out that this wasn't the tennis coach's house, it was owned by Martin Madrazo, who's a Mexican cartel leader. When conflict like this arises, it's best to embrace the conflict, be open-minded, and really listen without judgement to what each other have to say so common ground can be found. I guess Martin has never taken a conflict resolution workshop as he just sends some hitmen after us because he wants blood. It seems that drug cartel leaders are pretty aggressive, so I decide to take these backsies the destroying of his home. He then comes around to my house and says no take these backsies. Damn he's good. He then hits me with a baseball bat, which is pretty mean spirited. So yeah, there's now a pretty big issue as we owe Mr. Angry Pants $2.5 million for the reconstruction of his property. This forces me to call an old friend that you will know quite well, Lester the Dodgy Malacca, who says he may be able to help us out. I also beat these guys up as following the interaction with Madrazo, I now perceive myself as weak, and the temptation to claim some sort of authority back for myself through bullying others is too powerful. 
Before we start thinking about raising the money, I need to be a better daddy. They don't call me Papa Pelly because I'm a king in the bedroom, it's actually much more literal in the sense that I strive to be a great father figure. What better way to prove this than by spending a little quality boys time with my overweight son? Before we can properly bond, I need to get even with him in regards to the lost yacht. I proceed to take him to the luxury shopping district and find a suitable alley where I get out of my vehicle and kill him. Except Rockstar are a step ahead and they don't allow me to actually pull the trigger when hovering over him. I decide to shoot near him as a warning shot and fail the mission as Jimmy got spooked. What a big baby. In the spirit of Ivan the Terrible, if at first you don't succeed in killing your son, simply try again. I cannon the surprisingly fuel efficient sedan off the pier in a noble attempt to drown my own offspring. It's a sad day, but no, the big boy can swim. Wow, you can't even murder your family in this game. 0 out of 10 IGN. I'm really not having much success with drowning people on this pier lately. Okay, fine, I'll bond with him, and we decide to rent bicycles and go for a ride along Vespucci Beach. Obviously, I choose the BMX bike because this is basically an extreme stunt YouTube channel, let's be honest. I momentarily consider letting him win, but then instead take a shortcut and absolutely dominate him as this will help sculpt his fragile ego. He then informs me that my daughter Tracy is out on that yacht partying with a bunch of adult film directors. I ask him for the company's name and also where they usually publish their videos so I can download them. I mean, I dive into the water so I can save her. What great form on that dive as well. I know there's a lot going on right now, but Michael should be proud of his form. There was barely even a splash upon entry. There's my girl. I'm proud of the woman she's becoming. I would normally be worried, but thankfully she's wearing a fedora. Everyone knows it's physically impossible to get laid in a fedora. I rescue the reluctant Tracy and the psychopaths chase after us on jet skis firing at will. I'm usually the one being unnecessarily violent, so this is quite confronting for me. I decide I can't be bothered out jet skiing these frat boys, so I instead commit first degree murder in front of my child. Like I said, I'm a pretty great dad. My kids then have a fight on the public beach, which is quite embarrassing. And Tracy's annoyed that Jimmy snitched on her, and quite frankly, she's right, Jimmy. You're a snitch who spooks easily. I really am the glue that holds this family together, and it's honestly exhausting. Unfortunately, there's some live music happening on the pier, which is just what the doctor ordered. This man can strum like Hendrix and has the voice of an angel. What a treat. My fellow citizens proceed to then turn on me for no reason whatsoever. I literally just stood there in my sandals and cargo shorts, keeping to myself, and suddenly I'm getting gang bashed by a bunch of men half my age. I decide to pull out my handgun and do what I do best. It's a shame too, because beautiful voices like that are hard to find. I feel like I just shot John Mayer. Wow, I really need to go and meet Lester so I can start making some of that money back before the cartel bodies me. I swing by the house on the way, and Amanda do be looking like a statue though. Seriously, she just stands there like a statue for ages, it's really weird. I don't know if the game's glitched or if she's practicing mindfulness or something, but save it for the bedroom. At least Tracy's working up a sweat and staying fit. I'll position the camera here like this so that everyone can learn some great aerobic moves for their own workout routines. I watch Jimmy sleep for a good half hour and then hit the road. While driving to Lester's house, a woman screams out for help as her handbag has been stolen. You know what, it's probably time to start balancing out the old karma scales, so I decide I'll get it back for her. God, I'm a great guy. I return the money and she only gives me $50 of the $500 as a reward. Sorry lady, it's nothing personal, just business. This might look quite sadistic, but don't you worry, I reinvest the money into some solid investments with strong long-term prospects. I arrive, and for a big-time bank thief, Lester isn't exactly living large. He's quite a hermit and probably doesn't get out that much, so I ask him if he wants to go for a jog. He actually wants me to infiltrate the Life Invader headquarters, aka the satirical company Rockstar created to mock Facebook. First, I've got to look the part, and so I drive on over to Suburban so I can dress up like a tech geek. I also park my car correctly, because traffic legislation was written for a damn reason. I buy myself a red vest, and combined with the bag slung lazily over my shoulder, you can tell that I think big work smart. I arrive at the headquarters, and this man in the green shirt asks if I can fix his computer, and I tell him that I can. They've really gone for a chill work hip vibe office where people can unwind to maximize efficiency. 
Apparently, they even have colourful glory holes in the bathroom, which is meant to stimulate casual yet productive conversation while employees are on break. I assist this gentleman with closing his pop-ups and frankly the fact that he couldn't do this himself really makes me question his professional credentials. I slip into the back room and plant the chip Lester gave me. You see Life Invader are launching a new prototype phone and Lester wants me to spoil the launch party by making the device fail. The plan is to help him with this so that hopefully he'll help us rob a bank later. I head home so that we can watch the launch. Jay Norris, aka Mark Zuckerberg, is up there speaking like a champion. I proceed to activate the chip and oh my days Lester, you are off the rails mate. Apparently he did this so that he could short Life Invaders stock and make a fortune when the share price plummeted after this incident. The important thing is, he'll now help us rob banks. And thanks so much to all of you who checked out my second channel. I can't believe we're on the way to 100,000 subscribers already. It's actually crazy. I just uploaded a GTA Online video with the lads there yesterday, so I'll link that in the top comment and description. Otherwise, thanks for watching, you absolute legends, and a massive thanks to those who support the channel on Patreon. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.